What is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel I am gold penny I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2022 Hyundai Sonata N line courtesy of Jack G and Volvo Hyundai in York PA for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so I am in this one today not just because I own a Hyundai Sonata but this is the performance version of my car and so that is always a very good thing in my book but to go along with that performance you still get America's best warranty being five years 60,000 mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100,000 miles on the powertrain you also get three years of free maintenance things like the oil changes tire rotations things like that so that's a big win as well and so in this video I will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering for ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so the MSRP for the 2022 Hyundai Sonata N-Line will start at $33,450 powering this beast is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder if that engine sounds familiar to you guys, yes, that is the same engine that comes standard on the Genesis GV80 and the Genesis G80 as well. A little fun fact for you there. But this one puts out 290 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 311 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1,600 RPM. Power sent to the front wheels through an end-specific wet dual clutch with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will, of course, be testing out in a little bit here. But 0-60 to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 5.3 seconds and by the way to obtain that 5.3 seconds there is launch control as well that comes standard on the end line so that is pretty darn cool top speed believe it or not 150 miles per hour that's pretty darn impressive for this car and mpg numbers coming in at 23 in the city 33 on the highway still very respectable there then as well but before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in our end line i did want to mention the drive modes and so that drive mode button is located located directly behind the shift buttons and yes there are shift buttons in the sonatas that's going to be p for park r for reverse and for neutral d for drive but behind all of that you do have the drive mode toggle switch including normal sport sport plus and custom adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity gauge cluster which i'll show you guys in a little bit here but also the exhaust note as well so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in there let's do sport plus and let's do a quick little paddle shifter test here and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right here we go we got our red light waiting for it green <laughs> wet dual clutch not disappointed these paddle shifters are lightning quick i did have it in sport plus driving mode right there and when you do that it does take the traction control off so obviously i did get a little bit of spinning because of that if you put it in sport driving mode, you still got that traction control. So if you didn't want the spinning necessarily, go ahead and do that. But dang, those pedal shifters were lightning quick, as I expected with a wet dual clutch. And they have rev matching as well. I almost forgot to mention that. So when you're downshifting like I just did there, it's going to rev match as I downshift. So that is pretty cool as well. That's good for the racetrack if you were to take this one to the track. But anyways, now let's give back full control here to the Sonata and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. I am going to put it in sport mode for that acceleration, but let's go ahead and do that. All right, here's our opportunity. This is gonna be a slight rolling start, but here we go. Yeah, there's no slipping, dang, dang. Yeah, buddy, this thing is a rocket. I gotta be honest, but 311 pound feet of torque. That is a good bit of torque and dang, this thing can get up and go. And that sport driving mode, that's probably what I would leave it on unless you're on a drag strip because then maybe the sport plus mode, it probably wouldn't matter because their tracks are so sticky anyways. But yeah, I would probably leave it on the sport driving mode just so you can retain that traction for the street. But dang, this thing is quick without a doubt. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as the 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at an insanely impressive 110 feet. Let me tell you guys, typically with sedans, you get the 120s, usually upper 120s. I think the regular Sonata is around 123, which is still impressive. 
which makes me say 110 feet is ridiculously impressive. You almost never get that in sedan. So well done, Hyundai, for hooking this thing up with some very impressive braking. As far as the braking feel goes, it is 100% on point. There's definitely no brake pedal delay. It instantly brings you to a stop, definitely on the firmer side of things, which I would definitely appreciate in a car like this. <laughs> Sorry, I keep saying the word definitely. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as steering feel goes, it is a noticeable difference depending upon which drive mode that you put it in. But having said that, I do have it in the sport driving mode still right now. Wouldn't have minded a bit heavier of a feel to the steering still in that sport driving mode. So typically with the regular Sonata, it is a pretty loosey-goosey steering feel. It does get better with the N-Line without a doubt. You can, I can definitely notice that having driven the Sonata SEL Plus every single day. But still having said that, there are better steering feels out there. Hyundai, if you're watching this, I would say look at the uh look at the lexus is 350 steering feel that one is an incredible steering feel that's the steering feel i would kind of work towards so anyways as far as ride quality goes that is perfectly fine here's a manhole yeah it's perfectly fine honestly it's quite impressive soaking up pennsylvania zerd imperfections very nicely here on my short test drive as far as cabin noise goes again you guys saw during that acceleration the only cabin noise i'm really getting is the exhaust note, which I like. So honestly, that surprises me because with a lot of Hyundais, you do tend to get some wind noise coming into the cabin, but for whatever reason, I think I said this last year too, not with the Sonata N-Line, it's perfectly fine in here. So it's kind of luxury-like, so well done Hyundai there. As far as visibility goes, this is a four-door sedan, so you're absolutely not gonna have any issues whatsoever when it comes to visibility, but, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Sonata N-Line. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Hyundai Sonata N-Line finished in Stormy Sea, which is a super cool name for an exterior color on a car. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. First off, there is an N-specific front grille differentiating itself from the other Sonata trim levels with N-specific badging. You see that N-Line badging found in the upper corner there. That's pretty cool. Gloss black front grille as well. You guys could probably already tell that. Added body colored front lip specific to the end line. You guys can see that down below. It looks like none of the other Sonatas that are currently in production right now. So I do want to emphasize that as well. To the bottom corners there, you will find front air curtains helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination. To the sides, LED headlights do come standard. They do come, of course, with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Also, automatic high beams as well coming standard on the Sonata N-Line. That's pretty cool. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a car coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim those back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's going to bump it back up to high beams then for you. So that is a pretty darn cool feature if you ask me. And LED daytime running lights actually do come standard as well. And the best part about these LED daytime running lights is that they're like no other car on the road right now. Essentially the way those work is they essentially fade up onto the hood and then they slowly fade out until you guys can see that little crease there. So that is a pretty darn cool thing that no other vehicle is doing right now on the road. So I love that. But anyways, pretty much rounds out the front of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the end line. All right, so yet again, crawling into the woods for you guys. And I'll have you know, I have yet to get poison ivy from doing this. So kudos to me. But anyways, chrome window surrounds do come standard on the Sonata end line. Gloss black window treatment and so what I mean by that is on the other Sonatas the gloss black portion of those windows are actually matte black but with the Sonata N-Line and actually the SEL Plus that I have as well it is a gloss black finish so a little bit more high-end finish if you ask me so I do particularly like that but take a look at the side mirrors they are gloss black power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with LED integrated turret signals so a very good look to them N-Line badging found on the front fender as well. I definitely like that as well. But the gloss black side skirts, that's one of the coolest things because they have a little bit of like a design or an indentation to them towards the bottom. You guys can probably see that. So did like seeing that as well. I don't think I noticed that last year. I don't know why. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the wheels here. 19 inch and specific alloy wheels. It's going to kind of be like a carbon slash machine finished look to 
to them, a bicolor finish to them with the end specific center caps there. So definitely a very good look. But anyways, that about rounds out the side of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. Hope you guys are enjoying the uh, birds and the wildlife here as I'm in the woods. It sounds pretty cool. But anyways, gloss black shark fin antenna all the way to the top. Also a gloss black rear spoiler kind of tying together the rear taillights here. Let me show that to you guys because otherwise on the other Sonatas, that's going to be body colored and you're almost not even going to notice it. But it is gloss black here on the Sonata end line. So I thought that was pretty cool. Of course, you got Sonata lettering spelled out horizontally across the back there. There are LED taillights that do come standard on this one as well. And specific rear bumper, of course. And just below it all, you actually have a gloss black rear diffuser, which looks pretty darn good back there. And also a dual exhaust setup with quad satin chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always here is that exhaust clip. All right, you guys, and so now since we are around back of the Sonata, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are several different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob. There is also a button by the driver's side left knee. But my favorite way is probably the hidden button within the upper portion of the Hyundai logo. That's the way I probably use most often on my own Sonata, but that is the 007-ish way because everybody that does not own a Sonata is not going to know it's there, but you do. That is a pretty secretive way to go ahead and open it up. That's the way I like it. Anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 16 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there, of course, if you wanted it. There are some accessories available for the cargo area. I did want to mention that as well. There's some cargo bins you can put in the left and right side. There's also a cargo hook that we particularly have today, so that was pretty cool seeing that. And underneath of the cargo floor, you do actually have a spare tire as opposed to the fix the flat in case anybody was curious about that. But now, let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom here. It's a rear legroom is going to come in at 34.8 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there rear ventilation does come standard and there is one usb charging port back there so one of the kids can charge up their smart device if they wanted to rear center armrest with cup holders then also comes standard so back seats are done plenty well but now let's go ahead and make our way up to the front seats this was the first thing i noticed when i got in this one let me tell you guys napa leather dynamica suede surfaces with red contrast stitching does come standard so very high-end seat material that comes standard on this one eight-way power adjustable driver seat with power lumbar six-way adjustable passenger seat front seats do come heated as well you do have the end logo on the upper portion of the seating as well but my favorite part was the bolstering and let me tell you guys i watch a lot of my videos back when i'm considering cars and this would be one that i would consider because i do have a sonata i absolutely love it but the reason i would consider this one and jumping up not just for the power but the seat comfort is incredible these are perhaps my number two seats out of all of these 600 plus cars that i've driven so far number one is still the lexus f sport seats no matter what i don't know they're just absolutely amazing but these hug you in place so much they are amazing it's like literally the perfect seat for myself i just got to be honest these are some of the most comfortable seats i've sat in in quite a long time so incredibly well done job hyundai when it comes to seat comfort but now let's go ahead now and make our way to the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping there is that end logo found on the bottom portion of the steering wheel there it is leather wrapped and it comes with dark finishes as opposed to the chrome finish that you typically will find on your standard sonata so kind of the bottom portion of that steering wheel it's going to be dark finished just like the paddle shifters but let's now go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock the button to pop the rear hatch and also that hold button with the circle that is going to be a remote start that comes standard push button start also comes standard and you do have the digital key option as well which i personally have used in the past i like that so for whatever reason your key fob were to fail you can actually just pull up your smartphone and after downloading the hyundai app you can use your smartphone to get in and out of the car by simply pressing it up against the door handle and then putting on the wireless phone charger and that's how you're going to be able to actually start this one with the push button start so i'm just going to put my phone on the brake here and 
press that engine start button there. And so once started up here, the gauge configuration is going to be a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster, insanely customizable. Like I was saying earlier to you guys, the drive modes are most impressive because when you change it to sport from normal, it gives you this carbon fiber type look with a bunch of red hues. And then when you put it back to normal, it's kind of this gray and white look with a bunch of light blue hues. So definitely a very cool look when you adjust the driving modes, but there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel. With that, you can adjust different things like there's a compass, there's how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's trip A, trip B of course, but one of the cool things, you got boost pressure up here. You got engine temp up here. That is pretty cool and i guess just thinking about it now all vehicles have engine temp but not displayed the way the sonata n-line displays it so i do like that and by the way it looks like we do have a full tank here and we have a 437 miles until we hit empty so that's a heck of a range for a fun to drive car like the sonata n-line so very impressive there as well so gauges i love the gauges i love the digital gauges on my sonata as well but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality there is a panoramic sunroof that comes standard on this one gotta love that led interior lighting up here as well you do have a black headliner com coming standard there are home lane controls for up to three different garage doors along with the auto dimming rear view mirror of course dual zone climate control coming standard and again the wireless phone charger also coming standard up here aluminum foot pedals also coming on this one and 64 colors of ambient lighting and so i am kind of in the shade here in the woods so i'm going to try to show you guys that ambient lighting a little bit do a little uh different colors i could show you guys right now and i'll probably speed it up but that is pretty darn cool i love ambient lighting on vehicles but overall interior quality is great in my personal opinion there are a lot of leather finishes found on the doors as well as just above the passenger side glove box next to the infotainment screen with red contrast stitching i like that i like the design to the air vents as well and even the end portions of these air vents they're not left with a black plastic they're this dark smooth finish just like the paddle shifters just like the accents on the steering wheel as well so hundred really thought this out quite well one of my favorite parts here you got a little end badge just behind the uh, drive buttons there that's pretty cool and of course just in front of the wireless phone charger you do have dual usb charge ports and a 12 volt power outlet as well just behind all of that you do have dual cup holders and a little slot to put yourself in there if you would rather do that and within the center armrest there is a decent amount of storage there and by the way the center armrest is finished in leather again with red contrast stitching so Again, this is pretty much pretty similar to the interior I have in my SEL Plus, and I absolutely love it, so no issues with that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. There is a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display that does come standard on this one. Bluetooth and audio streaming also coming standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system also coming standard yet again. You could check out your climate control settings up here if you wanted to. There's a voice memo system, which is pretty cool. You can record your voice and then play back at a later date so if you didn't want to forget something perhaps that's pretty cool also you can adjust your ambient lighting settings up there like i was telling you guys about weather information can be found up there and so in addition to that of course you can adjust your radio information and so coming standard on the sonata n line this is a good one you guys 12 speaker bose sound system so i do believe you guys know what we have to do next let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one <music> I love it with the ambient lighting and the dark interior it kind of feels like you're at an EDM festival with that sound system and that music I guess you could say but ton of bass plenty of clarity that sound system honestly is perfect for the Sonata N-Line and I actually had a Bose sound system in my Infiniti G35 back in the day and it never failed me never broke so definitely a very reliable sound system as well but last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Sonata N-Line in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start IIHS top safety pick, which pretty much says it all right there, front side side care and airbags do come standard, driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard on this one, some of the more exciting safety features forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection lane keep assist lane following assist driver attention warning system adaptive cruise control with stop
stop and go, which by the way is an excellent system with Hyundai. Rear occupant alert, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, safe exit warning, and highway drive assist then as well, which essentially is Hyundai's autonomous driving system, which is pretty cool. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, very quick to 60 for a front wheel drive sedan. That's the first thing I'm gonna say because I believe at least to 60, I believe it is quicker than both the Camry V6 and the turbocharged Accord as well. So pretty darn fun car to drive for that reason. Great braking on this one. America's best warranty as well, being the five-year 60,000 mile bumper, the bumper 10-year 100,000 miles on the powertrain. So if you're concerned about that turbocharged engine with around 300 horsepower, you got America's best warranty. So there's peace of mind there. Three years of complimentary maintenance. You got the IHS top safety pick. The only constructive criticism I can think of for this one is I wish it did come with a slight heavier steering feel like the Lexus IS 350, for example. But other than that, having said that, I could still easily see myself getting this thing. So this was a blast. I love the seat comfort. That's one of the best parts. But overall, let me know what you guys think of the Sonata N-Line in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.